फोर थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव नाउ ओके सो आई विल नाउ शेयर द स्क्रीन द कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ पी एफ एन इज माई टॉपिक टूडे एंड कैल कवर मोस्ट ऑफ दी वाई पी एफ एन फेल्स हेलो सर वी आर नॉट एबल टू हियर यू म्यूट सर माय स्क्रीन इज विजिबल और नॉट यस सर स्क्रीन इज विजिबल बट बट यू वेर म्यूट नो नो आई हैव नाउ यस अनम्यूट यस यस सो टुडे डॉक्टर टन्ना सर हैज रिक्वेस्ट मेड टू Uh, do a topic on failures in IT fractures. So it's not a simple uh, that I am not going to discuss with how the guide wire fails. It goes inside, it goes in wires. But I will go into the crux of matter why it is IT fracture fails after even fixation. So that is my topic. So first slide. It if it is possible, we will go. Uh, on discussion also it is so the objective of my presentation is to describe uh, the technical hitches errors and modes of failure in unstable trochanteric fracture with their literature based explanation and the recommendation to avoid such complications so before we start what is unstable fracture we must try to understand that the ao classification describes the unstable fracture is a to 3 with more than two intermediate fragments and where an a3 fracture it's a reverse obliquity intertrochanteric fracture there may be extension into the greater token so these are all varieties of the you can say this is a spiral oblique fracture this is more or less a transverse fracture this is more or less a comminuted fracture just at the uh, lesser trochanter so it is a most important to differentiate what is unstable and what is stable because prognosis and implant selection depends on whether the fracture is stable are unstable variety so in unstable variety intertrochanteric fracture which is associated with posterior medial fragment lateral wall shatters posterior medial fragment reverse obliquity subtrochanteric extension and now one more is added is a osteoporosis that means a quality of bone where you get a fracture so but ct scan has revised the now the classification and you will find that these are the proximal trochanteric comminution floating lateral wall and distal trochanteric comminution they are not well and thin walled medullary canal and you can see this is the medullary canal it's very thin walled medullary canal they are variant of intertrochanteric fracture not well characterized in the existing classification and therefore ct based tally classification gives a exact picture whether it is stable unstable It's a two-part fracture, three-part fracture, four-part fracture, or more than four-part fracture with extensive comminution, which is not visible 
on x-ray and therefore why there are so many failures even after doing a good surgery it's because that the extent of the damage is much more than what is depicted in the x-ray and therefore we miss the chance of reconstruction of the intertrochanteric fracture. So biomechanics of failure of intertrochanteric fracture, higher the instability of a construct, more difficult reduction, maintenance, and ultimate implant failure. So higher the in unst unstable fracture, more difficult to reduce, and more difficult to maintain that reduction in whatever the implant may use a extramodulary or an intramodulary implant. So now these are the all complications of the intramodulary nail, though it is said that the intramodulary nail is a gold standard treatment for a intertrochanteric fracture as compared to the, the extramodulary implants. But now with this, there are so many complications with the intramodulary implants also. And you can see the lateral migration, bending, breaking, uh, walking out, JDP, uh, reverse JDP, and so many other complications we will find. And the reported literature is 14 to 21 percent of the failure rate. So why fixation fails in intertrochanteric fracture? It's a one is a patient specific, a complex factor type, and poor bone quality. Suppose if you have got a very comminuted fracture with a poor bone quality that is osteoporosis, probably your fixation may not hold that fracture and the texture will fail, the implant will fail even after doing a good fixation. Other is a treatment specific, that is a inadequate fracture reduction, implant position and selection. And this is also called, these are the three factors which is they are in the hands of the surgeon where you can improve the reduction, you can choose the implant, and you can also reposition the implant in a particular position and which type of implant should be used, whether intramodulary, extramodulary, or a prosthetic replacement. So, but last is the most important complications which you face, which is not described in literature, is a surgical error. Surgical error in our setup is the most common cause of the failure of any implant in the intertrochanteric fracture. So now it's a dynamic hip screw, a gold standard for intertrochanteric and the basic cervical fracture. Sliding device that provides compression of the fracture site with weight bearing permits early mobilization thus reducing the system complication and it is supposed to be the gold standard in a stable intertrochanteric fracture. This is an example, a DHS fixation, stable relatively fracture, A22 fracture, <clears throat> anatomically reduced, perfect anatomical restoration and fixation. Another example, you can see another A23 fracture, and there is a complete anatomical reduction. <laughs> and happy outcome. The DHS gives excellent result in a stable intertrochanteric fracture. It gives an opportunity to, to reduce the fracture by you can completely reduce if it is not reduced. And proper placement of the implant. So that is how it is that the DHA still it is gold standard in a stable intertrochanteric fracture. But the happy outcome does not occur always. 
फोर टू ट्वेल्व पर्सेंट फिक्सेशन फेल्यूअर इन ए वन फ्रैक्चर एंड फोर्टीन टू ट्वेंटी फेल्यूअर इन ए टू टाइप ऑफ फ्रैक्चर एंड यू कैन सी हियर दिस इज द फ्रैक्चर फिक्स बाय द डीएचएस विद एडिशनल स्क्रू एंड अल्टीमेटली व्हाट एज हैपन देयर इज अ लैटरलाइजेशन ऑफ द दिस इज द लैटरलाइजेशन ऑफ दिस uh dhs and you can say medial migration and the screw back down main cause is a precarious lateral wall so during surgery there is a hypogenic fracture of the lateral wall which led to the conversion of this a stable intertrochanteric fracture into a a3 type of a fracture that is called as a reverse oblique fracture with extension into the a uh, greater trochanter which becomes a most unstable fracture and therefore we have to look for the quality of the bone and as well as the integrity of a lateral wall before you choose the dhs and if at all you have chosen the dhs try to avoid the fracture of the lateral wall that will not convert your stable fracture into a most unstable fracture so another example a intertrochanteric fracture with the posteromedial fragment well done surgery valgus reduction perfect anatomical reduction dhs with additional screw gold standard but incipient lateral wall fracture lead to the medialization of the disc shaft and you will find that though the fracture is united in a perfect valgus position still the patient has a gait changes though he is able to do all his activity sitting and squatting 73 year <clears throat> intertrochanteric fracture cervical basal fracture it appears to be more or less a stable fracture but if you closely observe you will find that there is a greater <coughs> trochanteric comminution and a thin wall lateral wall this is the thin wall hardly there is any cortical bone is seen and in a such a fracture if you do dhs in a stable fracture also likelihood that this patient may go for complication dhs is preferred treatment still you will find that the two on ct ivt it was a very perfect reduction incipient lateral wall fracture medialization intersection of a <coughs> calcar into the shaft and you will find that the two month post of varus collapse and screw cut out So these are the things when you see a post-operative X-ray, you will find that the within eight or ten days the failure may occur. So this is the most common complication of a DHS incipient lateral wall fracture, which is not visible when I do a surgery, but it is evident in the follow-up period and when you start mobilization. So. this is the cortical landmark is given if this is less than 20 mm this is less than 20 mm probably your dhs is contraindicated to avoid this type of complication so why failed osteoporosis lateral wall fracture intersection of the proximal fragment into the distal producing a varus collapse and the head fragment spins in spite of a derotation screw and you will find there is a rotational uh, element so it has reconstructed after a uh, revised with the prosthetic replacement and so many other jugglery so he has to suffer you can see here how it looks a, a simple fracture and then led to a further complication and and ultimately a bipolar cemented replacement so this is how it is so therefore we have to study not only the implant choice 
but also the quality of the bone where the holding capacity of the bone, whether it is there or not. So as another example, it's a very stable fracture. One month post-op, you'll find that there is a migration of the screw only and settling and superior cut out. And you can see here how the diagram is seen. This is the DHS done. This is the DHS done. And ultimately, there is an incipient fracture which is seen, which has become <coughs> after mobilization, it becomes a complete medialization of the fragment occur. So, <coughs> so it looks a stable fracture converted into a most unstable fracture. And ultimately, you will find that the patient is suffering. Ultimately, he has to be revised by the cemented implant. So the DHS is, though it is a very good implant, still we have to use very cautiously. And in such a situation where implant may not hold, it is better to do a primary replacement in such type of a fracture. So broken lateral wall, when a lateral wall fracture occurs, the screw slides medially and there is no structure to block this movement. There is no structure to block this movement and there is no structure and therefore reverse oblique fracture is a contraindication for DHS and if you at all, if you do it, there are near about 56% failure rate described in literature. So, lateral femoral wall thickness, a reliable predictor of a post-operative lateral wall fracture in the intertrochantic fracture, and it leads to poor radiological and functional outcome independent of TAD with the lateral wall thickness less than 20 mm should not be treated with the DHS. So the thing change, healing is no longer a success, deformity and function matters, and perioperative insult counts. And therefore, majority of the surgeons you can find that they have converted from a, a extramodulary implant to an intramodulary implant. You can see this is started in 2002, and in 2012, there is a tremendous expedition of a use of intramodularily implant in the intertrochantric structure to improve the result, whether it is two single, two systems, or two screw system, single screw system, helical blade, screw, and there are so many modifications are available in the market. Why choice of implant in unstable IT fracture? Intramodular entrants, a mechanical advantage because lever arm medialization and it gives a better hold over the fracture. And there are so many implants or device PFN, TFN, interdian, PFNA2, and still modification they are going on to improve the results. So I am nail is preferable in unstable IT fracture is because I am nail allows the temporarily and mechanically incompetent. These are all incompetent, but biologically vibrant, viable fragment to heal around the nail because we do mostly by close technique and therefore there is no insult to the osteoperiosteal sleeve of the loose fragments. Only we need to stabilize proximal and a distal fragment. So it gives a better hold. So biomechanical advantage, almost all load is transferred to the nail and negligible portion to the medial femoral. Uh, so therefore, it is also said that it compensates for the posteromedial loss of the bone because the nail buttresses the calcar. And therefore, successful treatment restores the medial cortex by secondary bone healing. So therefore, you will find that all implants are there, but we don't touch this by a medial uh, lesser uh, trochanter 
for fixation, it's because that the IM nail substitute for the medial defect and hit hits by dead uh, cells if the stable fixation is there. So unstable IT fracture after 10th day, after one month, I am nail is not an panacea. It failed. So this is the fracture with a precarious lateral wall, fixed like this, and ultimately what has happened? Everything is out. So I am nail. So how mechanical complication of a broken lateral wall? A inadequate fixation occurs in these cases, and you can see here how this is occurring. So this is the lateral wall with the intertrochantic unstable reverse type of a fracture fixed with the EFN, and ultimately there is a medialization, migration of the screws, and ultimately cut through, and you will find that the lateral and superior migrations to in an osteoporotic bone after an unstable construct, though it looks a very good on a picture. So a lateral trochantic wall, not only it is very important in DHS fixation, but a key element in the reconstruction of the unstable per trochantic hip fracture is holds true for not only for DHS, but it holds true for the PFN also. So mechanical, how it fails? Sliding screw nail, nail in the center of the femoral axis, reduction of the lever arc, therefore the IM nail is preferred. No neutralization on the tensile side. No neutralization on the tensile side. And if the lateral wall is fractured, there is no support from the lateral side and ultimately sintering in virus with cutting through. These are all complications you find in the PFN system. So sliding mechanism, it's a dynamic implant. DHS is a dynamic implant. So therefore, there is a collapse after a PFN surgery. Nobody can say that there will no collapse in walker. However you compress it, some collapse is going to happen after using a dynamic system. So now this is revived with DHS and buttress plate. And you can see this is the, we have to revise it. And probably the patient has suffered a lot for a second surgery. Now this is the a very important point I am bringing out. A VAS effect in the this is the three-part fracture, TRM image. This is the intertrochantic fracture. It is not well reduced. And you also can see the guide wire is from the, not from the medial side or tip of the trochanter, but it is lateralized through the fracture side. This is the fracture side, through the fracture side, and calcare beak is inside. So the guide wire is passed through the unreduced, fracture and then what is the issue virus reduction medial overlap of the fragment and lateralization of the entry point you can see if you see a, such a picture in cr you can predict that it is a day one failure day one failure and if you put a nail it like this there will be a wage effect will occur and there will be more separation of the upper quadrant of the trochanter and intersusception of the calca. So this is how it is, and you can see the same thing has happened. Lateralized, EFN is done, and ultimately placement of the implant through fracture choid, shorter compression screw, TAD distance is also not maintained, and it's because there is a, as you can see here, this is the center point, this is this point, and there is a lateralization of the shaft also. So the offset is also increased, and therefore, if unreduced fracture like this, and if you pass a screw through this, you requires a very, very long screw, which may not be available on trolley because the length of increased offset, increased length of the 
through which may not be available on the table and ultimately loss of reduction, virus prolapse and cut out of the stool. So learning point, reduce the fracture first and proper entry point is the learning point to prevent such a complication. Otherwise, this was a good quality bone. Fall, it is a surgical error. It's not a fault of an implant or a, this is the fracture. So lateralized entry point, gapping of the lateral cortex and virus malalignment. So site of entry at the apex, medial to the tip of the glute and trochanter should be done. And if the fracture, you are not able to reduce by close method, it is better to open the, that particular fragment, clamp it and temporarily fix with the KYF and then do a find out the entry point and do the measure. Another example, patient with A2, three fracture with severe osteoporosis, post-op X-ray, virus collapse, widening of the superior part, wedge effect, and ultimately six post-op to showing and cut out of the screw. So virus mal reduction, medial overlap of the fragment, and superior position of the screw, if you find, that means it's a day one failure, day one failure. So wedge effect in a cervical basal fracture, unreduced fracture, passing the nail through the fracture side without nibbling out this medial beak, what will happen? There will be a wedge effect, superiorly the fracture will be widen, there will be a virus, and ultimately you can see a V effect or a wedge effect, you can see, and this is the most unstable construct in a stable fracture. If you do PFN surgery without reducing the fracture and passing the nail through the fracture site in a cervical basal fracture, where after a fixation, 100% anatomical radiological union is possible. In a such situation, better to do a open reduction DHS fixation with derotation screw. So this is how it is, a reverse wedge effect. So now this is another factor, that is a V wedge effect, that is at a superiorly in the proximal greater trochanter. And this is at the level of the lesser trochanter. This is known as a reverse wedge effect. So this is a reverse wedge effect. What happened? This is a pivotal point of this beak goes down inside. And what happens? There is a rotational malalignment of the proximal fragment. And there is a gap at the lesser trochanter level. And we find that it is a vulgus reduction. It is a vulgus reduction, but if you carefully find that your nail is going through the fracture side, your femoral head is pushed inside, you can see the relation with the greater trochanter, and there is a gap at the inferior side, and we'll find that the calcar is seen more prominent because of the rotational malalignment, and this is known as a reverse wedge effect, reverse wedge effect. So reaming of intramodulary by third generation nails, internal rotation of the kephalo cervical fragment and inferiorly oriented gap at the primary fracture line. And you can see here, this is the inferiorly placed fracture line produces a reverse wedge effect. Another example, the osteoporotic bone, Statically locked, follow up x ray, you see a medial void. You can see here is the medial void is there. Vulgus reduction, it is more than 135, wide on the medial side and precarious lateral wall. And you can find that there is an implant, still implant failure, virus collapse and cut out of the screw. It's because, it's because of only one factor that there was a gap, fracture wanted to collapse. It was statically locked here, ultimately. And you can see here, this has happened. It's not a dynamic construct. It behaves like a static construct. And there is a proximal migration of the 
through and cut out. So this is the thing happens. And therefore, even after doing only a vulgus reduction, if you keep a gap like this and bone wide, probably you are going to get a problem. And this nothing but it is the same example of a reverse wedge effect like phenomenon. Another example, entry point issues. This is the fracture side. Looking a very good fracture, you can see here, stable achievable fragment fragment. More or less is a stable fracture. PFN is done with a good intention, looking very good. But you will find that the entry point through the fracture side, entry point through the fracture side, ultimately what has happened? Same thing has happened. There is a migration, reverse migration. It is like a reverse jet effect, and you will find everything has gone out. So these are the things they happen. It's because of the, though it looks like a vulgus reduction, but there is a separation of the cervicobasal fragment and lateral fragment, and ultimately reverse jet effect has happened. It's only because of the unstable construct and probably associated with the osteoporosis. So current entry point medial to the tip of the trochanter after reduction is the crux, not through the fracture side, will produce a wedge effect, ultimately a virus collapse, and probably you will get migration of the screws. So Zhang et al. reported the occurrence of a reverse wedge effect after intraoperative nail insertion based on a new computer tomography guided fracture classification system, which especially happened to the basic cervical fracture type and resulted into a vulgus deformity with gapping at the medial inferior line fracture. So we say always a vulgus, 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 what you call it as a positive cortical effect, it's not an always a vulgus positive effect, a positive anteromedial cortex, negative anteromedial cortex, and positive anteromedial cortex. Probably there is a vulgus, but it is not a, a anteromedial positive contact, but it is a reverse wedge effect. Another example, a wedge effect, inadequate reduction, Entry point through the same fracture side. You can see the femoral offset has increased. Long screws are required. And ultimately, what has happened, there is a uniform wedge here. And there is a distraction because this beak is not allowing the fracture to collapse. And ultimately, what has happened, you will find preventable by proper reduction and holding the clamp. So such type of a fracture, this is also called as a epsilon sign fracture. They are most unreducible fracture, and therefore some of them may require a open reduction and fixation by DHS and derotation screw. So importance of reduction entry point, again I am emphasizing that it should not be like this, but it should be after reduction into the medial leg. So opening up the trochanter with stress at the sub at the trochanteric region, correct entry point is the medial to the tip of the trochanter, or even you can go if the trochanter is fragmented through the fiery park misposa, that will also suffice. So this is another example of a wedge effect. Same through the fracture side, through the fracture side. Though the angle is given and you can see varus 122 and ultimately what has happened, the fracture wanted to heal. There is a much more load because of the varus and ultimately screw broke down and there is a breakage of the screw also. So this is ultimate picture of this wedge effect and entry to the fracture side and therefore we need to bring out this beak outside and reduce it properly. Most of the time by close reduction, it is impossible. Another example, reduction 
entry point everything is glued and even a implant placement and you can see this is the well done surgery ultimately bone unable to hold the implant and reverse maturation so you cannot guarantee even after doing a surgery this is all cases are um, these are all true cases they are not from the net and these are all collection from my friends and whatsapp groups these are all real life cases you'll find and they will be surprised why these failed it's not only because of the implant not only because of the reduction but sometimes the quality of the bone and complexity of the fracture may give rise to a effect like this it's a z effect so these are all uh, implants are there so how z effect occurs unstable construct unstable construct use unequal migration from some medial to lateral depending on the resistance to the screw and another example you can see a tad distance is less more of a inferior screw a wider diameter canal varus collapse you can see here this is the wider diameter canal this nail is not just holding with the one screw there is a translation unstable construct and ultimately there is a virus collapse even after doing a very good you will see a just anatomical reduction in anterior as well as the posterior medial cortical is continued anterior and posterior also there is in good condition still there is a virus collapse and the fracture fail so reverse head effect and tad distance is also an important apart from osteoporosis in a wide canal it is better to put a long pfn so that it gives a better stability rather than the sal or a patol if you want to use a short pfn do a press fit implant not a loose implant because you are locking from the lateral to medial side because of the toggling movement some movement at occur at this screw nail junction and you will find that the screw nail Uh, the sometimes there is a breakage of the screw, sometimes breakage of the nail, sometimes you may get a fracture around the nail. Reverse head effect. So this is how it is unstable construct, and the inferior screw goes inside, and superior screw comes. Anything can happen. Head effect, reverse head effect, depending on the stability of the construct. So head effect phenomena is a potential complication of two leg screw system. and communication osteoporosis a varus reduction is the contributive factor in this phenomena and incidence it is near about 10.6% incidence and this is the precarious lateral wall negative cortical support there is a gap inside destruction migration of the screw and the progressive failure so these are all types of complication they occur now you can see here if you closely observe it's not a very bad reduction or replacement of implant a minor changes here and you can see there is a issue with the entry point it has gone through the fracture size you know what has happened there is a migration so lateral wall menas no lateral wall but missing no lateral wall but missing here no screw hold on this lateral only there is a fixation in the screw here in the femoral head and in the neck but the nail screw junction is a, a loose construct here there will be a micro motion and you may get a failure and varus collapse so implant unable to hold the fracture it is because of the lateral wall so back out of the screw in unstable trochanteric fracture so back out reverse and z effect and z effect is the common things so these are all you know, now we can see here back out and a migration cut through a cut through surgery you can see here this is a well done surgery this is well done surgery still there is a cut through It's because there is no point fixation here to the trochanter. Here it is statically locked. There is no 
uh, no, there is no space to go the nail inside. What will happen after collapse? It will go outside. So it has acted like a fixed implant, and therefore the cut through has occurred. So there be some uh, at the fracture side that must collapse must be allowed, and mostly we must do a dynamic locking rather than a static locking. So until recent time, rotational stability is underestimated with siding compressions to devices in the femoral head. The femoral head has shown to be rotationally unstable, especially with collapse and erosion of the neck with eventual cutout and failure of the implant. And these are all osteoporotic stable fractures, looks to be, and you can see if you take a CT scan, it will turn to be a unstable fracture. DHS is contraindicated because of the very thin wall and less than 20 mm choice of implant, though appears to be a DHS, but it's a PFN. And ultimately, PFN was done. And you can find there is an intraoperative, there is a crack after taking a postoperative x ray. And fracture at the tip of the nail was put on a stick bed rest, but x ray revealed a increase fracture gap and a spiral fracture hydrogeny during surgery. So why a patient was allowed, uh, this is was revised with long PFN. So why learning point, since locking screw gives rotational stability, tight fit canal is no longer in for. A tight canal rim one or more mm so that nail progresses which light blow hammer. The mismatch between the straight nail an anterior curvature of the femur leading to the fracture. And you can see the 24 or 25 mm nail crosses the mid diaphysis and therefore impingement by the tip of the nail against the anterior cortex of the femur in the excessively broad in old ladies. So we have to see this thing also, whether our nail tip, it is a straight nail it goes, otherwise you have to use anatomical nail now it is available. So a design feature longitudinal curvature, even it does not match in the long PFN also. So there is a danger of fracture here in the short PFN as well as in the long PFN. So while placement at the tip in short and long, we must respect the anatomy and mismatch of the femoral bone. So this is the characteristic of this posteromedial three-part fracture, thin wall, osteoporosis was treated with a two-screw system, and ultimately what has happened, there is a virus collapse, intersubception of this, and why this has occurred, it's because of the negative cortical, medial cortical support, intersubception of the flexible fragment into the distal, virus collapse, and cutout of the screw. Superior migration because of medial loss of the cortical support. So therefore, to improve the results and prevent the complications of the two screw system, helical blade is introduced and theory behind it, PFN two blade compacts cancellous bone and improves hold in the osteoporotic bone. The helical blade is believed to provide stability compression as well as the rotational control of the fracture and therefore you can see this is the neutral medial cortical support with a loss of a lateral support because of the lateral wall involvement well placed implant anterior this is in the lateral view and ultimately head neck fragment lost the medial cortical support from the femoral shaft intersubception virus collapse so ultimately leading to a failure. Another example is 75 year old lady, and you can see a vulgus reduction, anatomical reduction, osteoporotic bone, heavyweight, but on the lateral side, you will find the intersubception of the cervical basal uh, this uh, gap into the femoral shaft. That means on one side, it was a very good reduction, but at the other side, it was not a perfect anatomical restoration and ultimately what has happened, a cut through and virus collapse. And these are the 
So it is failed. It is because maybe because of osteoporosis and other factor. It's a neutral cortical support on the AP X-ray, but negative cortical support on the lateral X-ray. Intersusception of the proximal fragment into the distal varus collapse and failed. Another example, you can see comminuted trochanteric fracture. Only the anterior medial part is intact. PFN was done, nice anatomical restoration, and APN lateral is perfect. Long PFN was done, and you can see here after two months, it was holding the fracture, and ultimately there is a breakage because of the overload of a reverse of the fracture because the nail size is here is a 15 centimeter, 15.5. The screw is 12, so only thin part is remaining of this nail. And if the overloading is done, it breaks at this screw nail junction. And this is how it is. Inadequate three-point fixation leads to the overloading at this screw nail junction. And there is a failure at this junction. So it has been revised with one month, second month with additional plate with two screw and patient anyhow started walking on crutches. Another example. A2 type of a three fractured with PFN, osteoporotic bone, precarious lateral wall. You can see DH is contraindicated. Well done surgery, I think. Just little problem here, but in the lateral x ray, excellent anatomical restoration, but ultimately failed. Same phenomena. You can see here, there is no lateral support very much. Three point fixation is not there. Single point, second point, no third point fixation proper overloading of the implant and a very large hole into the nail and you will find that this screw junction there is always a fracture so it's not a fault of that fracture it is a fault of the implant and it is material mechanical failure revised with this condylar blade plate revised with this is my case only and ultimately, importance of lateral wall because osteoporotic unstable trochanteric fracture with deficient lateral wall treated by a nail, you will find that they may migrate or they may break. That is the issue. And ultimately, you will find that it has migrated, cutting out through, or sometimes it is progressive failure, failed to prevent toggling moment. And this is how it grows, how PFNA fails. And you can see. I am nail is not an panacea, whether it is two screw system, three screw system, integrated or whatever it may be. It is going to fail and it's uh, available. This is in the, uh, you can see in the synthesis uh, uh, catalog and you can how it, there is no rotational control at the cervicopagal junction with the calcar and the strap at the lesser trochanteric level. And even in the osteoporotic bone, this also fails, not only screw, but helical blade also. So it comes out. So this is how it is. And same thing is replicated here. No lateral wall, only two point fixation. And ultimately, it has migrated inside. Another example, this is the fracture, banana fracture. Is greater trochanter to later trochanter type three type where iliofemoral ligament is a coronal split. In that case, the lateral wall becomes a thin wall, and you can see here it has been done by a integrated screw, though there is a, some fault in the surgery because that compression screw was not properly fitted here, and ultimately, however. The reduction was good. Reduction in AP and lateral was good. And ultimately, still what has happened? Nothing works in osteoporotic one. Within a one month, even that is also failed. So therefore, nothing works in the osteoporotic It looks bone. a very stable fracture on X-ray. And when I reduced it in CR also, it was looking like a stable fracture. But on exploration, you will find that the there is a coronal split, the greater trochanter is fragmented, and the anterior piece is translated, though it was looking very good reduction on CR picture. And therefore, what I say, 
that the close reduction in intertrochanteric fracture is an illusion and therefore it should be nicely reduced and then the surgery should be done. So in this case you will find what will happen. This is the entry point of your screw. This is the posterior coronal space. We are doing a surgery very close. What will happen? There are two holes or one hole over here. It communicates with the posterior lateral folding fragment and ultimately there is extension of the gap on the lateral side to the coronal suite anteriorly or posteriorly and a banana fragment is there. It is more so and in a such a situation, a three-point fixation system converts into only two-point uh, fixation system and therefore overleading at the screw and nail junction and therefore there is a migration in the two screw system, even a single screw system, whether you use helical blade, screw or anything. And in such a situation, the prognosis is guarded. And therefore, to look, we have to look into this type of a fracture where unstable trochanteric fracture, we must study whether there is a coronal state. And that only can be revealed after a CT scan or open reduction. So these are all surgical errors. You can see they look very good, but ultimately we'll find the postoperatively they go haywire. And ultimately that has to be reduced in a reverse oblique fracture. They look very good on X-ray uh, in the on the table, but there is a translation and also the loosening, loss of reduction. So ultimately that has to be revised. So this is another example, not only the medial problem, but the floating lateral problem. No control here, there is nothing. And you will find that the anteromedial cortical support is not there to the nail and your screws are going through the coronal part, only two point fixation and ultimately overloading virus collapse and ultimately this has gone into a fatigue failure, ultimately it has revised with the condyler blade plate. Uh, this is condyler screw. So in summary, insufficient stabilization, micromotion, shear forces at the fracture side, and delayed healing is the cause of failure. So you must understand to improve your result, the anatomical reduction medial cortical, anterior cortical, perfect anatomical reduction is the most important, positive, neutral, negative. We must understand what is positive, what is neutral, and what is negative. Same thing in the AP X-ray, same thing in the lateral X-ray. Even a single mistake on reduction will lose your future um, prognosis. So this is how it is. You must add vulgus reduction and the most important is the entry point tip of the trochanter. Entry point to the tip of the trochanter in the lateral view. Anterior, one third, two third or at least in the center. So this is most important thing. And third, recent Literature says if you observe this all this thing, probably from 21, you are reducing the completion to 9 to 12 percent. And still complication, they do occur. Vulgus reduction, positive medial cortical support, positive medial cortical support, and addressing the lateral wall is the key to the success. And address the lateral wall by screw address the lateral wall by plate, augmentation of lateral wall plate to make unstable construct to a stable construct. And in conclusion, get it right for the first time. Revision surgery is a brain taxing to the surgeon and prolonged suffering to the patient. And I tell you, don't take it intertrochanteric fracture is an, a simple fracture. It's the most difficult fracture. I am nail is not an panacea. DHS is not an panacea. And sometimes, if you think that nothing is going to work, it is better to go ahead with the proper replacement if you are expert. 
or otherwise send the patient to the other senior surgeon. Intertrochanteric fracture not to be handled by a, a novice junior surgeon unless he knows the all tricks and tips of doing surgery. Thank you very much. So anybody wants to ask question, they are free to do so. May I? Got a condition? Yes, no issue. A very fantastic talk, sir, with a lot of cases and complications and tips and tricks. Very nice, sir. Uh, I just wanted to ask two questions, sir. Uh, in case of posterior medial void with displaced uh, lesser trochanter fractures, even if the reduction is valgus, do you advise reconstruction of the posterior medial wall by some percutaneous assist wiring or anything? First question. And uh, uh, second question is, suppose if in post-operative X-ray, there is a negative variance of the calcar uh, medial wall. So do you revise the uh, surgery immediately or you uh, go for uh, reduction in um, virus with uh, acceptable lurch and some uh, with union in virus with acceptable lurch in that patient? Majority of this collapse does occur not postoperatively. It occurs in the during the course of follow-up. If at all it is the, there is a collapse on the medial side and if the patient is in your ward, it is better to revise the surgery because you have done it. But if it is in the progressive failure, it is very difficult to convince the patient that you are going to fail. Sometimes it will fail, sometimes it may unite. So therefore, and they are mostly a largely a old population. Therefore, it does not matter very well them to whether the fracture and union is the mere prime. In the posterior medial fragment, majority of the time I don't touch. And it's very difficult. If there is a separation, it's too uh, large, and there is a separation of the lesser token is far away from the uh, sharp and then and then by hook we manipulate bring it to down and we can may use a circlage wire but you cannot achieve the anatomical end-to-end -end reduction in that case it's a just a stabilization and bringing that fragment near the uh, sharp okay sir uh, sir one more uh, question uh, if there is posterior medial void, so achieving excess valgus is the remedy for the union or no, no, no. does it ensure the union? No, 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 nothing. Actually, anatomical reconstruction is the only answer. A void and valgus reduction is not going to give enough stability. It will become, it will lose because there is a bone gap. There must be a bone-to-bone -bone contact to have a stable fixation. That's all. Thank you, sir. Sir, Gadevani, sir, I want to ask one question. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, is it advisable to do uh, CT scan in a every IT fracture? No, but if the patient is affordable and you are working in a higher center and facilities available with you, should be done. It's not a luxury now. It's a necessity. But because most of the time it is not available in your hospital, small hospital, and we have to send the patient to the other center, patient is having a pain, therefore we don't do it. But that must be the protocol now uh, performing a surgery, choice of implant and reconstruction and in intertrochanteric fracture. That does not mean that I do also. I also don't do it in 99% of the cases. But I advise that, that to improve our result and to improve the anatomical reconstruction, understanding better, it is better to go ahead with the CT scan. Sir, if CT scan is not done in cases of IT fracture, then how to assess on table uh, if there is a coronal speed or not? Should you no. open every time? No, 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 no. You can go through it by tilting your CR in various positions. And you can see a double shadow, you can appreciate that thing. And in case if you are having a doubt also, whenever you have a placement of a two screw or a single screw, you have to give a incision small. So before, after giving a, 
that uh, after uh, putting that uh, that uh, before putting your that screw you can give a incision inspect that particular area and you can do that also so you just extend the incision for a while of one or two centimeter and you can inspect and in that case if it is there clamp it and find out whether your screws are going through that coronal split if they are going through the colon strip, it is better to clamp them and do additional fixation of a lateral plate, circular wire, or additional. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Bully. Sir, uh, uh, you were telling that it's avoidable as much as possible uh, to go through the fracture site in an intertrochanteric fracture, no, sir? Yes. Sir, but sometimes... Uh, there's only a very small uh, uh, part of the bone which is available medially to take entry, sir. So sometimes it's difficult to so go straight away. Go to the pyrifarin inspector. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. When to dynamize and when not to dynamize? In a sub low, a high subtrochanteric fracture, if you are using uh, in that case, and if you find that there is a, some gap is there, then you dynamize. So, dynamization, um, you have to use two types of system, a static system and dynamic system. Better to use a dynamic locking in a high subtrochanteric structure, in an intertrochanteric structure, stable variety, you can get a with the, uh, this, uh, this uh, 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 static locking because we don't want axial collapse. Whenever you want axial collapse, do a dynamic lock. Okay, sir. What do you do for the lateral wall defects? Normally, you would play it or uh, what is your preference? My preference is there is a solid bone and chunk of bone is there. I push a screw with washer. That is my article is in Sikhard J. We have another article also that is Ganjalich plate. We can use it. Tanna sir uses a hook plate. Some of the fellows, they use a circlage wire with a figure of eight. So you can choose any method you like, but don't leave a bare screw nail junction. It must be buttressed by any method which you know it, whether by surplus wire, by plate, by screw, or uh, by doing uh, augment a uh, hook plate. Sir, uh, in case of lateral wall coronal uh, fracture, uh, any uh, any opinion about the screw uh, touching the nail? That screw is screw heads. That is Shivshankar's theory. That is Shivshankar sir theory, but I don't think it uh. works. Probably in his hand it may be working, but I am not in favor of that system. Sir, one question. One one question, sir. Uh, reverse oblique uh, IT fracture. Uh, is there any role uh, DHS with the TSP plate? Yes, yes. DSP and TA before advent of the PFN, that was the only method available. That is the DHS with TSP. But also it does not prevent medial migration because only it buttresses a lateral wall. But the yes. DHS is a dynamic structure. So you are yes, converted sir. into a stable fracture relatively. But what about the dynamic loading? So dynamic loading brings about a medialization of that shaft, though it prevented not like a uh, previous DHS only. Some prevention is there, but perfect prevention, complete prevention is not there. Some Sir, even even uh, to prevent the collapse of the medial wall, uh, the Richard screw not to get backing, there is a, some set screw was uh, giving, sir, in that um, uh, uh, implant. If so, the, if the set screw is there, dynamization is not done. So, what will happen? It will act as like a, a stable, a fixed construct. And what will happen? There will be converted into a, a dynamic class into a static class, impaction class, and probably okay. will get a cut through or a medialization. There is nothing. So, screw has to go somewhere. It will go inside and it will come out. Roll it, sir. Yes. Uh, is there any role in uh, proximal locking plate? Is there any role, sir, in uh, community practices? It, it, it has been proved beyond doubt 
that the proximal locking plate was used extensively for nearly about five years between 2005 to 2010. And it has been proved that it does not work and the forces of the trochanter, it cannot be um, neutralized by that locking plate with parallel screws. And therefore, the failure rate was much more and it has been abundant. Exactly. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. But today, today I think that Smith and Nave use a proximal femur plate, which is also a locking plate. It has been used and uh, it has been shown to be much better than the older versions. But still it is to be proved is merit as a substitute for an intramedullary implant. Have you used it, Garigone? No, sir. I have used for two time, two times and I failed it miserably. Now, you have used the Smith & Nevius one because... No, 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 no. No, no I have not used it. Have... Intra, intra neck, man, there are about three, four screws go inside the neck. So it is, it is, a, it is designed a much better comparatively. But as you very rightly said, it is yet to be proved that it is better than any of the intramedullary implant. But it is used basically as an adjuvant implant instead of a solo implant. Uh, one question, sir. About the dynamic locking, as you just told us that dynamic locking should be done in high subtrochanter fractures uh, to get the axial compression. Is there any role of dynamic locking in IT fractures? Because we are not looking for uh, axial compression in IT fractures. It's not an IT fracture. I am talking of a high subtrochanter fracture, reverse oblique fracture. It is an intertrochanteric fracture where there is a two-part fracture or three-part fracture. There is no need of a dynamization. In that case, you can use a locking screw, a static locking screw. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, sir, in case of GT avulsion, if you find interoperability is displaced very much, then you keep leave it like that or you fix that with SSY or something? Reconstruction is a good thing. You can do it by ET bond also. Uh, SS wire most of the time, unless you get a bone fragment, it will cut through and as soon as you go on twisting it, it will come out. So can, I, can I show a case? Today only I have done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can show. Today only I have done this. Yeah, this is This was a GT. Can you see that slide? Yes, sir. You can see this GT avulsion. Is it yes, or no? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Clearly. Yes, sir. Yeah. So now this GT avulsion, I got a CT done. So here is the CT. It's still like in this picture, but there are some of the pictures where you can see. Fairly good amount of displacement. Here is the one which you can see. Yes, Fairly sir. Yeah. Amount of displacement which is there. So she was a 70 year old today. Today only morning I have operated. And this is what I did ultimately. Tension band first with K wire. And then I added up this, this small plate. But if you can leave alone, patient can walk about, but they may get I abduct a lurch, particularly since there is a gap there in the CT scan. If there was no gap in the CT scan, probably it could have been left alone. But this is the one, and today evening only, the, uh, my from the hospital assistant phoned me up that she has walked about. On one wow. day, one only she has walked about. This GT, yes, this GT on twice, I, why I tell you why I did this GT was twice, I was trapped that it is only the GT undisplaced here. So I didn't to operate upon this. But ultimately, whatever this, this GT really flies out like this. Particularly in the one which I'm talking about, this one, which has been quite a lot separated on. This is, you can see, there is a full separation of this GT. Even when I went, there was a fairly big, big gap in the GT. So I put, put the K wires, stabilized it, put the tension band. But then I felt that only tension band 
one tension man is probably enough but i wanted to make her walk immediately so i put in this hook plate and then uh, she is walking about this is the hook plate where this tension men are anchoring on this screw and these are the screws which are going from the hook plate Any other question? Any other question? No, sir. Can you carry on, Daddy? Gona, what you were doing? Uh -huh. I have completed uh, totally the uh, complications uh, for one hour and I have shown number of cases to them, number of cases. So, so I'll, I'll talk about this open reduction. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you see my slides? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, here we come to reduction of the intertrochantric fracture. Normally, the closed reduction is obtained in 95% by traction, internal rotation, or by joystick. I am not talking about this. I am talking about the ones where all these things fail. Do not accept a reduction which is not very good. Like fracture like this, or fracture is four parts. These are the ones which do not do very well if they are not fixed and properly. I am talking about only this other 5% with a close reduction is unsuccessful in joystick is also not successful and then you need an open reduction. Most common is a sagging. This is sagging and if you do the, you put in the hand or a put in a crutch it and you correct the sagging, you will able to do this very well. Some of the table cells is sort of an arrangement. You have a table here which you raise it like this. So the sagging is automatic. You can see there is a sagging here. And you raise this bar, automatically the sagging is corrected. This is a part of one of the some of the tables. Same can be done by a strong assistant. If you put in the hand and you can elevate it, or as, as, uh, as Dr. Uh, Dr. mentioned about he has device that which is he attaches to the table, one made thing, it also works actually well. This is the type of a fracture which will be almost impossible to correct without any opening it up majority of the time. Any idea how will you correct this fracture? How will you reduce this fracture? Anybody? If you have seen these pictures, you know. If you haven't seen these pictures, you will never know. Sir, is it the epsilon sign? Yeah, with the traction alone, it will not reduce. Traction, rotation. That's right. So here it is a shinbis. Uh, some pin uh, is used and it is internally rotated. This piece is that uh, you can see this is external. You can see this uh, GTLT. So this is the same pin. And this is what trying to get it back. So this is the way in which you got the reduction. And you are holding it with these clamps. Once you got the reduction, you can see here I am trying to apply tension. And as a reason, this is bent. And then the, here is a, another sense pin. This is a one sense pin and these three things. This is holding the reduction. And now I'm passing the, the guide wire. And then I'm doing this. And you can still see upper fragment is in a slight external rotation, which I have not been able to correct. But this is the way you can do it. Now, this is the type of a fracture you can see. When it has been fully displaced, this is under traction, fully displaced. So this is where again a sense pin and pin proximal fragment to internally rotate and clamp in a distal fragment for control. And then, then you have been able to get these two things together. And once you get it together, you put in a guide wire and then, then you can you can do the DHS. Such fractures do not try to do PFN because you will not be able to keep it corrected, do the PFN, and the fragment remain in the same internal rotation which you want it, you will not be able to get it. So I feel this is the fracture which is ideal for a DHS fix. 
as you can see now, do a DHS and the things become perfectly all right in five minutes back. This is again the same thing. The upper fragment is in external rotation. This fragment is in a, uh, internal rotation. So unless you externally rotate the lower fragment, these fragments will not come together. So either you externally rotate like this or put a sand spin and internally rotate the proximal fragment. And then only you will get it. Now here the surgeon couldn't, I, this is the patient I inherited, surgeon couldn't do the reduction because if you don't know this, close reduction all the time doesn't come. And then you will have to do the open reduction. Open reduction is easy. You don't have to understand which way it is deformed, which way it is to be internally rotated, externally rotated. Once you do the open reduction, put the two things together so that you don't need to do those that knowledge of internal rotation, flexion, and everything what you need. So if you, see, if you do the open reduction, get these two fragments together, temporarily fix it, and then put in a DHS. This, if you try to put a PFN, you can put it. But keeping this reduction on, and even with the K-wire, if you can stabilize it, then you can do a PFN. There is no harm. But if you do a PFN in this piece, probably this piece will give way. There's a reason my choice for such fractures is a DHS. Now here, here it is, I inherited this. Surgeon did this in a, whatever the reduce, obviously went into non-union. So I did this now in, in medialization in those about 20, 30 years back. And then this is the way it ultimately hit up. So this, this is the typical way. If not reduced, can end up in non-union. This is the one. Where now, if you know the picture, okay, now the, this is what exactly you need to do. Upper fragment is externally rotated with the Stillman pin, internally rotate an upper fragment and adapt, then, then, then you'll be able to get the reduction. This is what he has done ultimately. Now, you keep these images in your mental eye, where external rotation of digital fragment only will reduce and not internal rotation, which is normal. This, 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 this. All these are the typical way. Now, even my nurse sees this. They said that this is the typical one which you will need uh, open reduction because we will not be able to do use it with the close reduction, the majority of the patch. Otherwise, it ends up into this sort of a non -need. Now, when you do the open reduction when you need, there are two ways in which you can do the open reduction. But this is the way I take it. Normally, when we do it, a DHS, this one master's lateral is is cut off from the hair so that you can do the tension when you do when you want to reach anterior. My suggestion is go in between the vascular laterals because can you see my slide? No, sir. No, no, no sir. sir. Not visible. Can you see this slide? No, 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 sir. You're not seeing my slides at all. No, no, sir. No, no sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Blank, no, no, blank no, screen. No. Sorry. And stop sharing. Anybody there, please carry on. Thank you. You are there. If there are any questions, you can ask me or Dr. Gadigone. <clears throat> Can I ask, sir? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Prashant. 
सर संगीत सर यस यस आई एम हियर हां एक्सटेंशन टू डॉक्टर तन्नास केस वन केस वाज विथ मी वन मंथ बैक प्री ऑपरेटिव एक्सरे वाज नॉट देयर बट सेम केस व्हिच आय which was open reduction was done and on 3d ct scan a very large chunk like a hopas fracture was there so very big chunk fixed with two cannulated screws uh, this was a tip of the greater trochanter yes and very large chunk it, uh, i was prepared for tfn and uh, pediatric richards adult richards everything was there but on opening very big chunk of Procanter uh, was uh, fixed with two simple cannulated screws. Just to thumb rule is the thumb rule is larger the fragment you must buttress it. Okay. Two screws are not enough to neutralize the hip abductor forces, and that is why okay. they require a hook plate or some plate, buttress plate, okay. to have a additional fixation. ओके ओके यस सर स्लाइड सर समस्या इलाके यस वी कैन सी नाउ मेल <laughs> 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 we take the vas central interval and then we go down and operate but if you want to do the upper reduction right so it means you go through the vas lateralis so that you get the anterior don't go through the vas lateralis if you go behind in the bulky patient you won't be able to go anterior so once you go anterior layer you will need the you don't put a spike to the use a retractor and you will be able to reach anteriorly and you did reduce the fracture very well here it is actually split in between anterior two third and posterior one third this is what is split and now you are seeing you are at the fracture here so you you can manipulate the fracture now if you see the fracture now it is very easy to reduce because you know the way the fractures are so you don't need to know the theory part of it once you go you see this fracture now you will be able to reduce it very well then do not use a spike Use a this uh, big uh, the viewers retract to be able to reduce it properly. This, this is what where it is not been able to reduce. This is under traction on OT table. This is come out of the capsule. So you cut the capsule, you cut the capsule, and you will be able to automatically the whole thing will be reduced. So I reduce this, and ultimately it is picked up with the VHS. Or here, this is the one which was. You can see what has happened. This was a CT scan which was there. So I tried to reduce it. I couldn't reduce it, and I passed the guide wire. Because the guide wire, but it is not in the center of the bone there at all. This is how it was. So ultimately, I went down and I put a mixture. I put a mixture and I turned the fracture, and now the fracture is very well reduced. So it was moved like this, very well reduced. Now was this. This this was turned. The mixture was turned. You can see the good reduction in the lateral view, the guide wire, <coughs> and ultimately it is it has been picked up with the DHN. A fracture like this, if it cannot be reduced in fracture, there is an impaction which has occurred here. So go down, put in a hook, and disimpact here. Once you pull and disimpact here, now you will be able to get the fracture reduced as it is. You can see with the hook. You we already we already uh, the impaction is lost now. 
Otherwise, if, since if you can see here, it was jammed here. So once you take the trochanter away, it is disimpacted. Now you will be able to get the factor reduced with this hook there, and then you can get the thing. Now this is the one with the traction, as you can see. It's not come, so you will need the open reduction. Hold the fragment here, hold the fragment there with the thing, and put in the guide wire and put the VHS. All these factors, I feel, where you had a problem in reduction, VHS is a better option there. These are mainly two-part factors. These are not terminated factors. And this is the one where the fragments are flexed, abductor, and externally rotated. This is the one which you can do it extremely well with this sort of a situation, and you will be able to reduce it properly. And you can get this anatomical. I feel the PFN here is not a better option because you will not be able to get this reduction maintained while you're doing PFN. But if you can maintain the reduction, it's all right, you can go ahead and do a PFN. Now here, once I put in the DHS, this was 140 degree DHS, which was getting away. So I changed to 130 degrees, and once it is all right, uh, sorry, 135 I put it, and you can see it is touching here and it is not there. So I changed to 140, and you can see now it is parallel, so you can do it very well. So this sort of a fracture, you reduce it properly, tension band here, and then you can get the perfect anatomy restored, and the patient should be perfectly all right. Here is the GT which I was talking about. This is the GT where surgeon thought this is an ordinary fracture of the GT, which I showed that case today in the board just now when I started. That's the reason I got a CT done there. But here what happened was about three weeks it happened like this. Because there was a small fracture IT which was not uh, which was not disclosed, so ultimately it had to be corrected and it was treated like this. I am showing a DHS only because in those days or even today some of these fractures I choose DHS rather than a PFN. PFN is a good implant. I use it often enough, but at times in some of these fractures DHS is a better option here. As you can see, once you do the medialization, the thing build up. Now here. I started with the PFN, as you can see, badly cumulated fracture. Started with the PFN, reduced it, put the PFN, put in the DHS, uh, put in the screw, and ultimately you can reduce the fracture and can get a better, better fixation. The point of entry we have already discussed last time, it is, it is somewhere here and not here. So you got to correct it. You can see you are correcting the reduction with this hook wire. And these are the days in which we didn't, we didn't know about the positive reduction. Otherwise, I wouldn't have touched this reduction. I tried to make it a zero reduction in those days before the, before the knowledge was there. Now, all these are the factors which are not reducible. So, if it becomes like this, ultimately, you put a traction table. On the traction table, it is reduced like this. You put in the DHS wire, put the DHS wire, and this is the one where it can go laterally. This is what we were talking about. But this is the one when you put a DHS wire, you have to read so that it goes medially and this doesn't travel laterally. If it travels laterally, that is going to be a problem. So oh, but I think Dr. Gari has spoken about these things there. So you go there medially, otherwise it will, it will shift all the time. Okay. This is what is it? The GT factor is broken here. This is the one which you, you will end up into the fracture, which is, appears to be all right. But the guide wire goes on shifting more and more laterally. So this is the GT fracture. And that's the reason you need here a plate in order to support it. The GT are a tension band or a plate to support it. As you can see here, we have been, the GT is a big GT piece. And so once you do it, you will have to put the tension band, and ultimately you will be able to get all the pieces with this tension band. So that's why the lateral wall which is there, which we have already been speaking about, you will have to support the lateral wall either with the tension band or with the plate, whichever way you like. All these fractures, you they are writing everything. There is a we have written a book at the end of the Babulka, where everything is mentioned for all this sort of a fracture. Now you see this subtrochantric factor. This subtrochantric factor is a very notorious factor. This is in an elderly person with severe osteoporosis. The, the dexa was minus three, 
here so, and you can see so much of termination. So I took it up in a lateral position, lateral position started the reduction, having, having done the reduction, as you can see, still it is not reduced, but I had a point of entry which was perfect in the performance, go down, reduced it, ultimately reduced it, open reduction we needed, once the open reduction was done, to end there and direct with the tension pan. So this is the way in which even without the traction table you can handle this. Such a badly combinated. Today probably I'll put in a two and plate here rather than in the tension pan. The tension pan alone at times is not strong enough to hold this sort of a pack. This ultimately held up fortunately, but today as I said I'll be more careful to put in this situation. Here was the fracture. I started off you can see still the reduction is not good. The reduction is not good and the point of entry was there. These are those earlier phase which I did the mistakes. So once it went through, I just phone you after some time. I just phone you. So this is how it is. So I convert it to a 95 degree and I am quite fond of this uh, Medialization fracture, which is like this. You you try to do it, it doesn't commit, but to me, once you medialize the fracture, this becomes very stable. Put in the, in the medial peak, put in the medial peak, it becomes very stable. This was the empty bond future which I put in instead of a tension uh, wire, and this becomes all right. Conclusion reduction is the important thing. PHS or a PFN is not more important than the reduction. At open reduction, once you see the fragment, the reduction maneuvers will be dictated in each fracture by seeing it. Prior to knowledge of whether to do internal rotation or external rotation of the proximal fragment, it's also redundant if you really do the open reduction. But if you do in the closed reduction with the joystick, then probably you'll have to have the knowledge of which way the fragment has to be turned. In those 5% where you do not get a reduction, you must do an open reduction if you don't get a close reduction by the joystick. Reduction maneuver is different in different factors. Analyze it and you got to reduce it and then fix it up. Four part fully displaced combinator factors must be reduced by open reduction if closed reduction is not obtained. If stable reduction is not obtained in those five percent of the cases after open reduction, then medialization must be considered. Approach either take a whole vascular lateralis anteriorly or by choice you split <coughs> vascular lateralis in middle and retract anterior. Deep pop retractor to be used and not a bone pipe for the anterior block as I mentioned. Thank you very much. Any questions in this open reductions or whatever we have discussed or any, any comments by the other faculties if they want to add up anything? I think, sir, in this, uh, you have shown cervical basal fracture like epsilon the type. They need often open reduction. Unless you do open reduction, uh, that cortical contact doesn't come. There is always some translation remains on medial side or anterior side. So the message should be there, as you said, that unreducible fracture, better to fiddle uh, instead of fiddling for a close reduction. Open, reduce, clamp it properly, and then whether you do a DHS, PFN, or condyle, it's a choice of a circuit. Questions, anybody? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, there is a lateral wall is. Uh, uh, obliquely fractured and two guide wires are put one in the upper part one in the lower part and when triple rim that then that uh, bone uh, uh, breaks then how to handle that situation very good question this is a very co commonly people get this and it has yes. been a science about that that if the lateral piece is uh, approximately thick i do not remember Sorry, do you have the number how much is the lateral piece if it is thicker, then you said it will break. 20, 20.5 mm. 20.5 mm. Yeah. So if that is, it is smaller than that, chances of it breaking are higher. Mm -hmm. And if it breaks, I would feel that adjuvant plate would be a better option. Okay. 
instead of just waiting for it to fail, put an adjuvant plate at that time. Okay. Either a hook plate or any type of a plate, whatever you believe. If not anything, at least a tension band, which is an absolute must. Sanjit, you want to add up something? I see you. Yes. So when does it break? Uh, usually, <clears throat> uh, when the lat porotic, when the lateral wall is very thin, and there is a in the, these patients, elderly patient, there is a significant sag. Uh, what you are trying to do is you are trying to elevate and then rim through that thin lateral wall. And if you are not, if your reamers are not sharp, the triple reamer, if it is not sharp, you are using a handle to rim it. That is a time when the barrel, when you enter the barrel in the lateral cortex, it breaks and that produces a pantrochantric fracture. It is an intertrochantric with subtrochantric fracture because <clears throat> uh, the trochanter is a separate fragment and you have created another fracture there. So a sliding hip screw is not a suitable implant in those situations. One, as Sir has suggested, is you need a lateral augment along with the intramedullary nail or a condylar blade plate, a fixed angle implant is the choice in such a situation. I feel the condylar blade plate is being very much, it is not being used. I'm sure Dr. Garikuni must have spoke about the condylar blade plate. Have you spoken about it, condylar? No, 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 sir, no, sir. Huh? No, no, I have not spoken. So there is a whole talk by Garikuni on condylar blade plate. Next, next, next Thursday, I will talk on condylar blade plate. Any suggestion regarding in, uh, not using triple reamer? No, the triple reamer, as is Dr. Sangeet mentioned, everybody buys it for the first time five years or 50 years back and they use the same yes. thing. It yes. is, ideally, it is to be sharpened as frequently as, as required. All the other option is you start off with a thin grid, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, thinner reamer, and then ultimately put in a direct reamer which you need to reamer the way in which you may be able to avoid a breakage of the lateral wall. Sir, what I do, can I tell you? About the, about the breakage occurs in both DHS also and PFN also. So it is any pair, but PFN it is. Considered to be, it was considered to be safer if the lateral wall drops by external. Nowadays, it has been shown that if the lateral wall breaks in PFN, that also is a very unstable factor. In our place, uh, people are rice water eating people, so they are very osteoporotic. So, after uh, putting guide wire, we put drill and with kerosene punch, we and <laughs> remove the uh, part of the bone and then put. Uh, uh, plate on that. It has also been observed that even after you have done the operation, if it has not cracked, within first few days, once the patient starts walking about, it will crack. So, it is not an assurance that on the table you are not cracked, you are not cracked, because once you start muscle forces and the weight bearing which occurs, it can itself also break. So, in such situation, as a as a safety precaution, I would feel you must use in an adjuvant plate. Asim, you want to add up something? Sir, between a PFN with uh, augmented augmentation plate and the devices which combine uh, intramedullary device with the which allow you to pass the screw in the hip through the plate. What is your preference? There are now many companies making such devices where I can pass the screw in the head fragment through the hole in the plate. It's a one uh, combined construct. So what do you prefer? Dr. Garikune has devised that plate also. So Dr. Garikune, would you like to opine on that? So though it is the same thing. It is just buttressing the lateral wall, but we are putting a dynamic... Uh, uh, construct. Therefore, what happens, you cannot just prevent the migration of that two screws, two screw system. So, therefore, it only limits the uh, medialization, but never prevents the settling of the fracture, even you do a plating also. So, I have seen number of cases, as you said, the PFN is oversold, 
same thing is the, the buttery plate is also a flimsy buttery plate they are also overshown so what you need is a robust uh, lateral wall fixation like as tanna sir suggested a hook plate like thing which can only prevent a, a lateralization and lateral migration so what is your uh, sangeeta uh, what is your take i have a presentation 10 minutes presentation on that please please give it sir get still time if we have time then we can yes yes you can last 15 20 minutes minimum is there and there is no there is no red lights or anything we can always carry it on till the time people are willing to listen one question sir yes yes Uh, while discussing regarding the valgus osteotomy, we discussed that medialization of the shaft is detrimental to the knees. It increases the stress on the knees. So you just suggested that we medialize the shaft for providing fixation to the four part fracture if we are not able to achieve reduction. Is that a good idea? No, oh, I think you are you are missing it out. When you are doing the abduction abduction osteotomy, you are shifting the whole distal femur medial. While here you are putting the peak of the proximal femur into the medial side, so it is a the it doesn't change that angle. What it is, what it changes in the abduction of the other. Okay, sir. Put too much of valgus, then at times it becomes a valgus force, and that is the one which is not very good. Okay, sir. Yes, Sanjit, carry on, please. so as dr am i visible yes yes so as dr gadigone has pointed out what is not in our hand is osteoporosis and uh, that is a large section of patients where in spite of doing everything right uh, the implant fails because of osteoporosis and the second issue is uh, the current literature or uh, so many talks you hear so many people talking about lateral wall fixation is it compulsory uh, what else is required when you are doing that is uh, what i am going to speak on now <clears throat> now uh, as we know osteoporosis contributes to the severity of the traumatic fracture and it predisposes the local environment to a delayed bone healing response <clears throat> uh a example this is a 80 year old patient again a female and she had sustained this fracture and you can see here the complexity of the fracture the trochanter is split in a, a sagittal plane then you have a lesser trochanter there is a comminution at the subtrochanteric level the lateral wall is thin and as uh, as uh, what has been discussed in the earlier talk by dr gadi gone so this is a stable reduction though it is not a positive reduction so does that mean that every fracture there is a, a lateral wall fracture also so does that mean it is going to fail does that mean that every unstable or every uh, negative reduction or a neutral reduction is going to fail uh, let us see what happens to this and uh, this is a picture post op so you'll all predict even i would predict that since this has medialized significantly it is bound to fail and the lateral wall is flying out but at 6 months this is the picture where Uh, everything settles down and <clears throat> the combination on the medial side has started healing on the lateral side the wall which was broken it is started throwing callus and at one year this is the picture so as per what you have heard this should have failed this should have gone for a cut out this should have uh, completely collapsed and gone in varus but that has not happened will come to the reason again later so uh, there are two important things which is not in our hand the uh, comminution on the medial side the avulsion of the lesser trochanter which we cannot really fix and 
uh, give a support from the medial side and secondly the posterior combination the uh, the uh, that again is not in our hands so what is in our hand is the lateral wall and the anterior wall now another case uh, this is a 80 year old female again osteoporotic the lateral wall is again very thin and during the reamer or passing the screw it is very likely to break and this is how it was fixed again see the reduction uh, the lesser trochanter doesn't is not giving support posteromedially the reduction there is already a collapse because of the implant use and we all now can predict that in this lady this is going to fail but it doesn't happen at 4 months things settle down there is a good callus formation there is no further collapse and till now uh, you can see what has happened subsequently as pointed out by tanna sir the same thing happened subsequently during the mobilization now this is a uh, immediate post op you can see the drain the lateral wall here has broken subsequently it has not broken on the table it is it broke during the physiotherapy and even that can you see here the barrel has come out or probably the broken lateral wall has gone inside or posteriorly and this is the picture at about uh, i think one one year or two years at 3 years yeah. so <clears throat> everything has healed the lateral wall has settled the medially there is a good callus there is no further collapse there is no cut through of the skip screw and this fracture has healed so in these two cases where we have used two different implants the results have been same as unexpected so what is the key uh, in this <clears throat> it is uh, we must understand the cross section of the intertrochanteric area and in this we have a strong posterior cortex a uh, uh, stronger medial cortex and again a thick anterior cortex so if you see the cross section it is the posterior and the anterior cortex which is quite thick very rarely the anterior cortex is comminuted usually the posterior cortex being thinner out of all the lateral and the posterior is always comminuted in intertrochanteric fractures and you can see here very often you will see the anterior cortex undisplaced all the comminution is on the medial side or on the posterior side so we have one structure which we can reconstruct that is the anterior column okay so uh, why it is thick because it bears more weight hence it is thicker it is usually less comminuted and it can be because it is less comminuted it can be reduced well to prevent uncontrolled collapse so uh, and is that adequate for fracture healing in the earlier two cases where we have used one uh, intramedullary implant and one uh, extramedullary implant that is a dhs in both what was the key for the success of the surgery it was a good well reduced anterior wall if you can reduce that the collapse further collapse which is the main cause of failure or cut through can be reduced significantly in osteoporotic fracture aim for compaction and avoid uncontrolled collapse with the telescoping implant so if the fracture anterior stable reduction is achieved chances of uncontrolled collapse are very less medial wall fragment should be reset and fixed as much as possible to and or and or add positive variance whenever you are doing a fixation either with a intramedullary or extramedullary implant so the medial wall thickness is more important than lateral wall and the reason is uh, compared with the lateral wall the presence of the medial wall in the intertrochanteric region is a necessary condition for increasing the axial failure load maintaining the stiffness of the femur keeping the strain gap between the anterior and the posterior down after you have done a uh, implantation so two important structure in the cross section of the intertrochanteric area are important the anterior and the medial wall now uh, the anterior cortex 
it fails in tension and is not comminuted. So uh, reduce and create a clean fracture line anteriorly like this. So you can see here, there's a good anterior reduction. The posterior cortex fails in compression and is usually comminuted. So reducing that or taking care of the posterior combination is not really in our hands. So what is in our hand is a good anterior reduction. And if that reduction is not maintained, like here, what you can see, if you leave a gap anteriorly, subsequently, what is going to happen? It is going to collapse and you'll have an uncontrolled collapse, which is very eminent. And that will lead to a failure of most of these intertrochantric area. So uh, achieve a good anterior reduction like this. And as we discussed in the last, it can be viewed in about 20 degrees of external rotation lateral view. So your aim is use various tools so that you get a good anterior reduction, which is in line with the anterior cortex of the shaft. Don't accept a reduction like this. If the anterior cortex is locked, the chances of uncontrolled collapse are less. And that is what has happened in the earlier two cases. Now you can see here, this is a simple undisplaced fracture. And here, once you reduce it, you can use any implant, either intramedullary or extramedullary. And uh, this is the end result of, I don't have the intra-op picture, but uh, believe me, it was reduced anatomically and this is how it was fixed. But we didn't take care of the anterior reduction here. And that is why there was an uncontrolled collapse and that led to a failure in this. And it is this picture what we have seen earlier and which has led to a collapse and then subsequently rotation and cut out of the DHS implant in just one month time. And the cause is a poor anterior reduction of the head fragment. If, if you're, it is not reduced, it spins, and then that leads to a failure and ultimately she required a hemi replacement. Ostromedial combination, thin lateral wall is broken intraoperatively while reading this topic we already have discussed. At risk, unstable intertrochantric fracture can produce a in, uh, pantrochantric fracture like this. And that will, here, while reaming, you can see the trochanter has been avals, and then there is no contact on the medial side, and it is waiting for a disaster to happen at this stage, where from an uh, undisplaced fracture, the trochanter is broken, a pantrochantric, where the shaft has to medialize whenever you are using a collapsing implant. It's, it becomes a subtrochantric fracture. And in subtrochantric fracture, a DHS is contraindicated because it is going to medialize the shaft with the collapse of the hip screw. A trochantric stabilizing plate, which are uh, supposed to buttress the lateral prosthetic wall and can prevent excessive collapse, have been uh, designed since ages, but do they really prevent that? I think Dr. Gadigone has already explained. And the lateral wall integrity, the most important factor in predicting the reoperation, as described by various authors. Again, I don't repeat. I don't want to repeat that. So uh, it has been discussed already. So it it is one of the factor which has been stressed a lot as an important predictor for a, a reoperation. However, uh, there are other uh, uh, ways which you can stabilize this. Here, we have used a simple figure of eight, but again, for a, a comminuted trochanteric fracture. But again, what you see here is there was a good anterior reduction. So the success, whether you use a lateral plate, hip plate, or a simple circlage wire, which is through the medius and underneath the barrel. Even this is going to work. And nine months, the fracture has been, there is a good callus, there is no displacement, there is no cut through. So that is the key, that is the success I feel whenever you're treating the unstable fracture. 
in, in a situation like this, where there is too much of instability, the lateral wall is broken, the medial wall is communicated, and the head is in varus. So the best implant is uh, something which can neutralize the gluteus medius is a combination where once you reduce the trochanter and the neck and give a valgus, just ignore the uh, medial gap, put an intramedullary device like this, but that will not take care of the instability. So what you need is a lateral plate which can pull or neutralize the gluteus medius which is attached to the trochanter. So now uh, this can best be achieved by using a hook plate over the implant. So a combination of that is the one which is most stable, I feel. Uh, this has been used along with the Dhumi replacement again where the trochanter has been stabilized with cable and the same hook plate which was shown earlier in, in uh, Dr. Tannasar has shown the same hook plate. That is how it looks like. And another case, a 70-year-old. Here, uh, again in the CT, you can see uh, the anterior, there is a displacement, the posterior sag of the shaft fragment. There is a comminution posteriorly and the anterior wall is also broken. And this is best treated by an implant where we use the combination of a circlage wire and a plate which is fixing that greater uh, trochanter. And uh, this is that about uh, four or six months where you can see the fracture is almost healing. Even though the circlage wire, which is a thin circlage wire was used here, the thicker should have been used to hold the greater trochanter and the fracture is healing. There is no cut through of the implant in this situation. In an elderly, uh, where uh, very rarely you have a combination of the anterior wall. Here is one case. So if you find that on a CT, probably you should use a stronger implant like a condylar blade plate, which is in that situation where it is too unstable, where uh, the anterior wall is also broken. Reducing that is difficult. Here, a condylar blade plate is an implant of choice, which will allow a good healing and uh, a mobilization of the patient. This elderly has osteoarthritis of knee virus, which he's awaiting a total knee replacement as well. But uh, he's able to go back to the same level of activity after having fixed that. So in to conclude, uh, we rely on uh, implants and uh, we do not understand, we do not try to understand the importance of the anterior wall and the medial reduction. And we expect that the implant will give a successful outcome, but that doesn't usually happen. The key here is how well you have reduced the anterior wall and how you have addressed the medial wall also. So the posterior wall and the lateral wall, probably in my uh, uh, opinion, my opinion is, is that as important as reconstructing the other two structures. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sangeet. Dr. Chantak, you have joined just now. Any, any comments or anything about this? You are muted. You are muted. I actually just joined, so I was just enjoying the Sangeet's presentation. Sangeet? Sangeet? Yes. Uh, if we accept this, uh, we all know that reduction of the anterior cortex is most important. The medial side may or may not have a void. That's not in our hand. If there is a large, lesser trochanteric piece, more or less nothing much can be done about the medial con continuity. So how come that using a fixed angle device like condylar blade plate, which sort of reconstructs the lateral cortex by a very strong metal replacement, saves a lot of those fractures, unstable situations. So how does that work if uh, integrity of the lateral wall or lateral cortex is not important? How that device works? So, so basically it is a strong, very strong implant, very thick implant. Okay. And 
what is available are the primary compression trabeculae which are in the and uh, inferior quadrant of the femoral head so it engages that the tip engages that and then rest is uh, uh, addressed by the some cortical screws in the shaft so that acts like a strong implant which will withhold the till union till the union so two to six months um may i may i add something uh, sangeet yes sir please sangeet this is a open method and you know that it is the most strongest implant uh, whatever implants are available uh, extra medullary so what happens when you do open reduction you never do a condylar blade plate in unreduced fracture so okay. all osteopaleoosteal sleeves they are buried underneath the plate of the condylar blade plate and they remain there and what you achieve the anterior anteromedial reduction should be a perfect reduction why always stress that there is a some translation that is to be reduced and clamp it and then you do a anterior pinning and then do a condylar blade plate so that restoration of the anteromedial cortex is the crux even in the success of the condylar blade plate if that is not restored what will happen there will be translation and it will become the unstable structure so whatever the dynamic implant you put there is always a micro motion and there is a motion at the anterior stability also and therefore they also fail but condylar <laughs> is not uh, fail it's because it is snugly fitted in the, the dense trabeculae of the lower one third of the uh femoral head so so this is my contention and therefore but to tell you again on my observation the condylar blade plate fixation requires a longer period of time for union as compared to the dynamic implant that observation i have seen uh explanation i don't <laughs> sir as you rightly pointed out tanna sir rightly pointed out reduction is the key i have used for difficult non unions everything opposite side distal femur plate a 95 degree device a nail plate combination whatever you want to use you will get away and succeed if you reduce the fracture well so reduction is the key and most of the time when we are doing open reduction probably we are doing a better job of reducing the fracture than a close one yes dr rajendra so i just wanted at the end of all discussion of complication and all so anybody from ortho tv so can we conclude sir what is important from today's talk gadi uh, gone in one sentence can you conclude it is the reduction reduction placement of the implant and proper entry point is the crux of fixation in the intertrabeculum the picture whether you use extra medullary or intra medullary implant does not marry very much but in unstable fracture the situation should be handled on the table whether you need to augment your fixation or prior if you are in doubt whether to go for a direct uh, replacement surgery if it is not reconstructive sir you are muted if i can ask at the end of a surgery for a interpopentric fracture how much fall you have that you want to do the work how much how much sure you are that you have already won no i am not sure i cannot give guarantee in a interpopentric fracture of any implant right. it's because actually i have done my job the things will be clear after one minute yeah because i think all of us we know that the it fracture whatever fixation we do we are never 100% sure that now we are through sir sir there is a change in the thought process also like you are doing almost 10 years back that if i am not sure then more often i am in those 70 plus i am replacing them rather than trying to fix them In, in every yeah. 
like Garikun in air. He cannot really replace all of them. He, he will not be able to give uh, better results to those patients. Even if he succeeds in 70%, first time or second time, another 10, 20%, still he probably do a better job. Because that, that population replacement will not be optimal in the Okay. We are in the big metro, taking those table chairs and good people. Replacement is a very good option. Whether it is an option for Garigune or even for Rajendra, is it an option for you? Then? No. To me, to me, fixation is the first option. Prashant, can you mute yourself? Prashant. Can you give me the power to mute everybody? Do not give me that power. There is nobody from opposition. Yeah, he has muted now. The voice is gone. Yeah. Yeah, Chandra, can you, 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 you want to say something? Yeah. Uh, question to all the faculties here. So, in a stable fracture, your first choice of implant would be Sangeet? DHS, DHS, and DHS. 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 Sir, 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 your choice in a stable fracture. Tana, sir, your, your choice in a stable fracture would be again DHS. And complications date of a DHS in a stable in any good fracture is much less than the PFS. Okay. Gadi Gunesh, sir, your, your choice in a stable fracture. DHS and DHS only. DHS. So you would not put an angle blade plate in a stable fracture? No, no, no. I will do DHS with a two hole plate. DHS with two hole plate, minimal invasive surgery. In the, in the intertrochantric also? Yes, two hole DHS with additional screw. And Dr. Negi, your choice? No, sir, Chandak, sir. Uh, understand what he is saying. Additional screw. So that means uh, additional lag screw in the hip. Uh, additional hip screw. Yeah, got it. So, uh, a DHS and a derotation screw. Derotation screw. Yes. yes. But but how will be the direction of that DHS screw? Is it a Powell screw or it is a parallel screw? Parallel, parallel screw. Parallel screw. Okay. And now, in an unstable situation, Sangeet, your first choice? Again, a DHS. In an unstable? Yes. Again, a DHS. Provided I define by a CT scan the instability but my decision will change intro op so so no no additional augmentation only dhs in unstable only in a elderly we are talking about elderly above 65 okay we are talking of younger individuals younger it would be a, a hip, hip screw intramedullary hip screw if i were above elderly elderly again like most of these it's which are unstable, uh, provided I get a good reduction, a DHS and a circlage wire would be my first choice. Second would be intramedullary implant. Uh, third, add up if something is, uh, uh, if the lateral wall is gone. And that last choice would be a replacement. That is contrary to the general belief that an unstable intramedullary hip screw. Will you make it stable? That is what is my concept. Okay. So you make it stable by reduction, yeah. and, reduction and a wire. And, a, wire. and, and a, a, a Powell screw and a DHS. And additional a tension band wire. Okay. Fixing the radius underneath the barrel. Okay. And Tanna sir, as we have heard him, he chooses, he chooses between an intramedullary screw or an angle blade. So that no, 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 sir. So the angle blade plate would be always for those unstable fractures where we feel we have not we have not been able to achieve the reduction. It is too much unstable, too elderly. So those it is for those groups. Am I correct? Correct me if I wrong, Dr. Gadigoni and Dr. Tanna. Sir, if I am able to reduce by close method, I will go. For intramodulary fixation in unstable fracture. No, 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 no. Sir, Kadigone, sir, one second. Yeah. We are answering the question which Dr. Chandak sir has raised. Uh, when do you use a condylar blade plate? So, I am telling you, when I require open reduction, then 
there is a choice in between two whether to use open reduction and intramedullary nail or open reduction or condylar blade in this situation now i started preparing a condylar blade plate in open reduction and internal okay he made it very clear chandak sir chandak sir well wait wait asim wait for tanna sir's opinion if there is a comminution at the point of entry of a pff there so many times the gt is shattered or you are going through the fracture the fracture position is such in this situations i will probably still choose a dead plate rather than a pff uh, asim you are saying something uh, unstable fracture if i am going to fix it i'll use intramedullary with an augmentation plate so never all, all you are unstable right now have a intramedullary nail with a augmentation plate quite quite often they they will have an uh, they will so, have augmentation plate okay quite so often. how do you decide in a unstable that you are living without augmentation or with augmentation is it instability uh, noted no no, no 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 if th there are fractures which are four part which are unstable but the whole soft tissue sleeve is not shattered okay like upper end of the humerus there may be cracks but they are not labeled as four part because they are not blown apart and right. uh, if they are really blown apart and i am struggling to put those pieces together then i will make more effort to keep them in their place rather than hoping that they will stay there okay okay nagesh sir mai ek sawal puchta hu aapko if if you have a doubt about the stability after a pff do the it okay i use a hook plate or whichever type of a hook plate you want but more always the, available more the instability more the implant yeah. more the implant additional implant and, and as i have been talking about overkill is not the same got you going to say two hole for a intertroch uh, is stretching it a bit too much i will i will give presentation don't worry <laughs> more than 100 cases of dhs with two hole screw and next time in next saturday if you want i will thursday i will give presentation two hole dhs wonderful result no issue great <laughs> any any questions from the audience no what are sir yeah First X-ray which you showed, uh, if that nail, uh, nail breaks at the second hole in two screw PFN, the first X-ray which you showed, we are not able to see it on the lateral wall. Maybe I think can you can you close down your video? Then you may be able to hear a little properly. So your 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 voice is breaking. Yeah. Now you go. Hello. Ah, uh, go ahead. Hello. Ah, uh, go ahead. Ha. Huh. The first X-ray which uh, Doctor Gawale sir has shown, there is beak on lateral wall. Ah, uh, uh, it is and flying then, out. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, such two, three cases are there with me where the nail is broken at second hole, and there is virus. So, so in that situation, how to proceed? See, uh, we refer that case to some higher institute. <laughs> Me, see, uh, I can tell you, you will not have a higher institute than this forum. <laughs> <laughs> see, as I said, uh, uh, what what is detrimental is a virus and an unreduced anterior wall. Yes. So that makes it more unstable, and it is bound to fail. either it will cut out yeah. or it will break the implant is going to break okay what okay. is in our hands to make a unstable at stable it fracture by reducing it or by adding a implant okay so after second surgery what is my question is second surgery uh, by repeating the same implant or uh, changing the implant what is the age of the patient i would say plan to do double implant if you are redoing it no sir his question is whether to use a same implant usually not 
Uh, if you have only three months and it is broken down, technically that implant is not really deteriorated. No, 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 no. The same, I mean, exchange with the same intramedullary implant or go for a surface implant. That is what is his question. Yeah. Oh, I thought same implant, he wants to use the same implant for economic purpose. No, no, sir. It is already broken. He has removed it. So he means. Broken. It is already broken. Not same. So, can you present your two, three cases next time so that we can discuss? Any that fine case, any forum, when we talk about IT fracture, there is never a uniformity. Yes. There are Even a few if, people who believe this, these are the few people who believe this, and these are all the successful, highly volume surgeons. They have their own thought processes, and as Sangeet mentioned just now, we few of the diehard DHS people hesitate to talk about a DHS because people will jump on us. DHS, DHS, still you are doing DHS. The functional result is actually better if uh, with the DHS. Similar fracture, one side PFN and one side DHS, DHS will have a superior function. Yes, definitely. <laughs> they are less painful and they would not demand removal of implant also. There are many factors sure. in the point of entry, that small okay. branches, small virus deformity, which you get in, in about 60-70% of the PFNs. So all those are the few factors which are there. I think at the moment we only present the successful X-ray, but the function which I showed those two ladies with the heel fracture, but still they are miserable, you know, in, in the in the presentation which I showed on day one on the IT factor. So that we don't see it at all. In the meeting, we only show the hill factor. Yeah. Oh, so, Kaite, Chandak ji, we have borrowed Western knowledge ke upe apan orthopedic jeer mein. So, Tarna sir, jo bolte hai ki jo karte hai, wohi dikha sakte hai apan. Aur jo success hai, wo bolne ko log tayar nahi hote hai ki PFA ni over sold. I now totally agree that PFN is oversold. What I feel that the trochanter fracture should be treated as a distal condylar fracture of Tibar, humerus like this, that a perfect anatomical restoration and a robust fixation can only give a result. Otherwise, the failures will be there. Why they are changing from two screw to one screw, one screw to again screw, again augmentation? It's because it's a failure. It's a failure thing and therefore, to my knowledge, I was an ardent follower of a close reduction having done for 20 years. Now I realize that a perfect anatomical open reduction and fixation by whatever method, by extra modular in Tamblandia is the crux of success. And he must have successfully converted you to... <laughs> <laughs> The intertrochanteric fracture, if it is opened up and adjusted it properly, the healing process is not altered. It is not like a shaft of the femur. Shaft of the femur, yes, if you do open reduction, the healing may be delayed. But in an intertrochanteric fracture or a, or, a, or a distal femur fracture, open reduction does not harm the healing process. So may I ask a question, sir? Yeah, yes. please do. So my question is to Gawale, sir. Sir, in the first slide, you've shown a, a fracture where the lateral wall was uh, opening up. And uh, I just wanted to ask if there is any kind of uh, maneuver you did, like did you apply traction or something to bring it back so that it uh, falls back into place? Or did you just wait and did it happen spontaneously? I have not understood your question. So you in your first slide, you'd shown a fracture with PFN with a small beak kind of uh, lateral, lateral wall. Lateral wall. So, yes, sir. You were saying that it is opening up. It is going more more lateral. Yeah. But in the next slides, in the follow up slides, in the next couple of months, you'd shown that it has again reduced uh, to an acceptable level. Okay. So, so my question is, uh, did you uh, use some kind of traction or post uh, uh, surgery any kind of maneuver that you did to Nothing. make that happen? Nothing. See, uh, my concept is now uh, if you have a combination of a long bone, like uh, uh, what do you do while treating a wedge fragment of a long bone? 
uh, one side you get a good reduction okay and other side is comminuted okay so what do you do you usually buttress the comminuted side with a plate okay so here now uh, because on one side you have a good anatomical reduction like a cortex to cortex reduction the other side is comminuted so we try to buttress that comminuted side that is a principle in long bones or even in the metaphysis the same applies here you cannot buttress the posterior wall which is comminuted you cannot buttress the medial wall which is comminuted so uh, what you have is a good reduction of the anterior and on the lateral side actually you are not buttressing that fracture you are just putting a implant which looks good on a x ray whether it functions or not we really don't know yet by principle it doesn't yes. work on the lateral side if it has to work like a buttress plate it has to be on the comminuted side that is a posterior side yes sir sir in that uh, same patient sir did you uh, when was the patient allowed to weight bear sir in about 6 6 or 6 partial weight bearing was started uh, as soon as the pain was over that was about 10 12 days and uh, about 6 weeks she started full weight bearing sir uh, isn't the weight bearing going to further open up the fracture the lateral beak kind of uh, lateral wall yeah, but already the... <laughs> you answered you again and again yes sangeet sir that beak is seen most of the time in operative ta operating table that beak is not seen and when patient is taken out and uh, take x ray is taken that beak is seen most of the time it is it is some rotation like we are internally rotating and fixing on the table and the x rays are usually taken in external rotation so that is why always you see that uh, beak or the tip flying out on the lateral wall weight bearing Exactly. It is the small construct, as she said, because of anteromedial contact. Therefore, it has survived. If there is a stable fixation, whatever the osteoperiosteal loose pieces they gummed up around the nail and they take take the shape of the original, and in due course of time they remodel. So, therefore, it is nothing a new phenomena. It is the daring of a surgeon which continues that implant that it will not fail. And faith is the most important. Isle God is there. Any friends? Any other yes, questions before we close down? Yes, Sangeet. Uh, today was Sir's birthday. Uh, we all want to wish you again, Sir. Many many. Uh, wish you happy birthday. Wish you oh, happy yes, birthday. Yes, many sir. happy returns of the day, Sir. Come along, many. Sangeet. Happy birthday, Sir. Thank you. Happy birthday, Sir. Happy birthday, sir. So sir, join even on birthday. That's great. I <laughs> he operated to. Yes. So we uh, we are all lucky. Even the today morning's patient is lucky to have uh, him as an operating surgeon, and we as students to learn from him. That's Thank sir. you for spending time, how, sir. Sir, how many cases you did today? Yeah, we get one, two, the other get one. तो दो तो बहुत होता है ना दो केसेस मुझे हड्डी का पांच घंटा हो गया चलो फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू वेरी मच एवरीबॉडी गुड नाइट गुड नाइट बाय 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 चंडक सर हाँ हाँ बोल क्या बोलता एडिन फोर पार्ट अनस्टेबल पेशेंट कम्स टू अस देन वी काउंसिल दैट इफ पेशेंट टेक्स बर्थ थ्रू टू लेग्स डाइस थ्रू वन लेग सो वी स्टार्ट कन्विंसिंग द पेशेंट दैट फेल्यूअर्स आर मोर इन दिस पेशेंट फ्रैक्चर एंड फेल्यूअर मीन्स almost stability and death so from day one first meeting we try to <laughs> convince the patient that this is very difficult fracture <laughs>
all four part fracture four part unstable fractures so we'll have one discussion on how to come out of fear psychosis how to come out of fear and how to counsel the patient so this all happened to us also when we were young and in our initial days and years of practice so we'll have one session on counseling right you will you'll be able to overcome your fears okay thank you sir okay good night bye bye Or thirty-five, we can close down the recordings.